my own heat pump is finally up and running. It only took a year of careful planning, renovating, insulating, designing the system and finally installing it. Today you'll get to witness the whole process. Has this been a success or a failure? You'll have to watch this video to find out. We moved into this house around a year ago. It's a relatively small uh, three bedroom linked detached house. So it's only attached to a neighboring property on one side. It, when we bought it, it had an EPC of D and the EPC said cavity walls insulated, which I assumed was true. So I was really surprised how cold the first winter was and how expensive the gas system was to run. So I decided to add additional internal wall insulation. I insulated upstairs and the hallway going from upstairs to downstairs, so just one wall, this wall behind me, with 25 millimeters of PIR insulated plasterboard. And then later on, we started doing other renovations, changing windows upstairs, coring through the walls for a heat pump, and I quickly realized there is an uninsulated 70 mil cavity, which was a great news. I was so happy to, to learn that because that explained why the house was so cold. And it also allowed me to get a company to install a nice high quality bead insulation into those cavities. Loft insulation, obviously that was an easy upgrade. I, I did it, I've upgraded 100 mil of existing loft insulation with additional 300, so right now we've got 400 mil insulation. Downstairs still has original windows, UPVC double glaze from the 80s, pretty drafty. And some of them, uh, some of double glazing has failed on it, so we got condensation inside. Upstairs is already changed all new windows with the U-value of 1.2 and the property is pretty decent when it comes to air tightness. So decent that it will require installation of some kind of a ventilation system with heat recovery in the future. All of that work allowed me to drop the heat loss of the property from 7 kilowatts to around 3 kilowatts right now. After insulating and changing the windows, the energy use dropped by more than 50%. So this is finally happening. My own heat pump is in a phase two of installation. Marie is just uh, putting the primary pipework outside. The base, that was completed oh, probably two, three months ago. So we've got this primary pipework going through the wall to the kitchen. The pipework enters the property and goes across to the garage. And this is one of the radiators on the ground floor, microbore, and it's all drop down, so all that pipe work goes is plastered inside the wall. Single panels, no convectors throughout. As always, we're using primary pro insulation for uh, the pipe work, nicely mitered, so it looks very professional. 2.5 millimeters high tough cable going to a new fuse board that uh, I'm yet to install in the garage. And here inside the garage, this is our flow and return entering the garage. That's the cable that will have to go to the new fuse board that will go on the other side of the garage. And those two cores through the wall are for hot and cold water. That's my main meter. And that's armored cable that will go to a new supply. So the electrician is in the middle of putting uh, this main fuse uh, in. And that cable, he managed to run it really neatly. Look, it goes inside the wall, inside the cavity, goes through the cavity and this cable comes out here in the garage. So it's lucky that the cavity wasn't insulated because it was possible to run this big armored cable inside the cavity and not have any unsightly cables on show outside. And new board will go right here and then that board will supply power to the controls and to the heat pump. So that's the ground floor of the house now. We are getting ready to install underfloor heating. And because we are doing underfloor heating, I thought, well, why not remove the wall? And because I removed the wall, I thought, well, why not change the kitchen? So it got a little bit out of control. So we're doing major renovations now, not only a heat pump or not only the underfloor heating. So Marie has already started uh, doing the panels. My favorite panels, castellated panels. Reason why we're using those is they allow us 100 millimeter spacing between the pipes, 
highest possible output at the lowest possible flow temperature. Floor, slab, uninsulated. It will receive around 25 mil to 30 mil screed, uh, gypsum based screed. Then we've got nice thermal mass. Not worried about lack of insulation to the uh, slab. Why? Because it's gonna act like a massive giant accumulator for, for the energy that under for heating will be radiating into it. The work has progressed a bit, so now we've got walls ready for plastering and the flooring screeded and also sanded down. They came back to sand it down to remove the latency. Latency is just a film that forms on top of the screed that traps the moisture. So after uh, the uh, gypsum screed is done, they have to actually not even sand it down, they grind it down with a big grinding wheel. So while plasters were doing the work here, me and Marie, we finished all the wiring of the heat pump inside the garage. What are we gonna do now? We're gonna fire the heat pump for this floor only for underfloor heating and go upstairs, remove vented cylinder, remove a uh, header tank and remove cold water storage tank in the loft, but the heat pump will be already running on the ground floor. And what a day it is to be commissioning and firing the heat pump. It's minus five today in the morning and probably it's gonna be around zero all day so I'm hoping we can actually fire it uh, in that temperature and here in the garage this whole setup is already finished and wired so let me talk you through it we've got main heat pump interface controller this is receiver for wireless controls I'm gonna use both wired and wireless controls for a short while to test a few things uh, we have spare switch for the controls so this is already all turned on uh, then we have spare switch for immersion heater in the cylinder. This is a smart controller for uh, the immersion heater on the cylinder. So that allows me uh, Wi-Fi access to my uh, hot water cylinder. So I'll be able to use my phone to boost the immersion if needed. We also have full open energy monitoring on the setup. So we've got a heat meter here. Uh, we've got uh, flow and return temperature sensors uh, and some other devices that allow communication with my router, so that's wired, that gray wire there is CAT5 wire going back to my router, uh, connecting this whole setup to the internet, and right now this setup is live. So if I go to my stats, I can see nothing's running, just background consumption of the unit, which is around, in my case, nine watts. So heat pump not running is consuming nine watts. Normally valent units consume five watts, but I think I've got additional four watts being consumed by a diverter valve that needs permanent life. So this is a, a Resol diverter valve and they are really solid good valves. The only drawback is they do require permanent life and it seems to be drawing around 4 watts. Okay, that's very nice. Let's hope the heat pump fires and we can start warming up the ground floor. Compressor active, heat pump's running. Let's have a look outside. Super freezing air coming out from it. Very exciting, my own heat pump fired for the first time and in a very good weather to test it as well. Super exciting. So this is the last boiler 
at this property and for me it was really annoying to have this boiler and the main reason I'm removing it is because I could never get to those boxes here zone valves I don't use them I collect them from other jobs so lightweight as well it literally weighs nothing all right goodbye glowworm Before we talk about the system performance, we have to talk about this floor. Now the ground floor is tiled and because it is tiled, I had to turn the underfloor heating off. You need to allow uh, the adhesive to cure before you can turn underfloor heating on. So if you go checking open energy monitor for the, uh, my data, you will notice that from the 31st of January, the system has poorer performance and more cycling. And I'm gonna keep this system off till around 10th of February. So how does it compare? What happens when you zone half of the house off? Average temperature, since the floor was tiled, average external temperature was 10 degrees. And average COP coefficient of performance of my system in that period was 4.7, which is still relatively high. However, if you look backwards and find another period where external temperature was around 10 degrees, when the underfloor heating was on, the full system performance was around 20% better and the COP for those periods was around 5.9, which is, you must admit, a much better result. We hear voices on social media saying that it's impossible to outperform manufacturers' data. So whenever we say our systems run at higher efficiencies than published by manufacturers, we hear that it's impossible, you can't do that, you're breaking laws of physics. That is not True. For example, my 5 kilowatt unit published valiant data says that its scope should be 4.48 if the flow temperature is 35 degrees. However, my system runs at 32 degrees maximum flow temperature, so I would expect slightly higher efficiency. Valiant just doesn't test it to such a low temperature. Also, Valiant designs usually have buffers, that lowers your efficiency, zoning, that lowers your efficiency. So if we take those out, we're not breaking any laws of physics. We're not uh, running equipment at impossible efficiencies. We're just finding ways to make what's already there more efficient. So what is the efficiency of my system? Well, let's have a look. You can now go to Open Energy Monitor. The link is uh, right here and in the description and check for yourself. The unit's been running for around two weeks one of those weeks uh, rather inefficiently because the system is zoned so lost about 20% of efficiency and it runs at a scope so seasonal coefficient of performance so of a performance for the period it's been running for it's not yet a full year of 4.77 however I'm expecting this to go much higher because the first week was a really cold week almost design temperature around zero and the second week it's been zoned so it's gonna only get better because it's only gonna get warmer. And also next week, end of the week, I will turn the full house on, further improving that efficiency. So to answer another question, are efficiencies of uh, five, seasonal coefficient of performance of five or 500% efficiency achievable? Totally, totally it's achievable. Simply because my house is not even insulated to a new build standard. It's not far off, but it's not quite there. So I don't see any reasons why with careful design all of the new build properties could have efficiencies of 500 percent if they're heated by heat pumps to achieve that though you need to have decent system design correctly sized unit it can't be oversized because cycling will kill uh, the efficiency and correctly sized emitters and it's actually not that difficult Another thing I've never realized is that when you run the system at such a low flow temperature, today we've got 10 degrees outside, and my radiators are running at 23 to 24 maybe degrees, if you touch them, they stone cold. You would never know they're on. You have to take a thermal camera pointed at the radiator to see that actually the radiator is on. However, the temperature in the room is 20.5 degrees. So they are working. <laughs> they are really like impossible to tell they're on. You're not gonna be drying uh, any washing on those rods though. That, that might be a little bit of an issue. All right, those cops and scops, they don't mean much to most people. People want to know how much it costs to run this system. 
First week was really cold, design temperatures, so it was running flat out and the house was unheated for a while before that as well. And then we have second week that the system has been running, only half the house, so less efficient. In that period, that system has used 122 kilowatt hours of electricity. So that means that half a month of running this system costed me around 37 pounds. Uh, so to run this system in the winter will cost less than 80 pounds a month. Assuming you're running on a, a regular tariff. However, I do have a cheaper overnight tariff. I pay eight pence per kilowatt hour of electricity. So I'm expecting to have lower bills than that. I would estimate that annually this house will cost me on heating and hot water between six and eight hundred pounds. And that's before we'll take into the account batteries and solar PV that will come soon. That should make this house pretty much free to run. Now it's over to you guys. What's your opinion of this system? Has it changed your mind about heat pump technology? Would you consider having one of those units installed in your house if someone could guarantee you this level of performance? Really curious to know what you think, especially if you are a skeptic when it comes to heat pumps. Let me know in the comment sections below. Thanks for watching and see you soon.